as we begin a new year uh, filled with new beginnings, a new slate, new promises. It is also, as I mentioned last week, a time to kind of stop and reflect. And not only on the past year or, or on the changes that we will undoubtedly face in the upcoming year, it is also a time to reevaluate um, our kind of our goals, our objective, and our vision, if you will, for the future. And in, in doing so, um, I was at a tr before Christmas, a couple of weeks before Christmas, I was at a at this minister's training uh, in Decatur, Illinois, and I I recall a question that was proposed to me. The question was simple, and I propose it uh, to you as well. What is the greatest sound in your profession? What is the greatest sound in your profession? Sound. Not the thing you do, not who you work with, but what is the greatest sound? If you're a labor and delivery nurse, is it the sound that, that, that the baby first, when it first cries, when it's first born? If you're retired, is it the sound of your, your kids, grandkids, busting through the front door and, and screaming and yelling and excited to see you and be there at Grandma and Grandpa's house? Whatever your profession, what is the greatest sound that you hear? doesn't matter if you're retired or working 80 hours a week. We all labor in, in, in something, uh, don't we? So what is that greatest sound? For me, it was simple. You see, in, in all the responsibilities and all the ups and downs of what I do in trying to navigate many personalities and many personal agendas in officiating funerals and weddings, the simplest, greatest sound for me is a sound that I don't get to hear enough. There's this brief sound when individuals enter into the baptistry pool. There's this calmness in the water as the, the recipient comes forward. And they commit their life to the teachings of Jesus Christ. They pledge a life devoted to following Jesus Christ. And, and after the ritual of, of baptism is over, that's not the sound yet. After they rise out of the water and their sins are cleansed, as they begin a new life, as they begin to walk a new path in the way of the Lord, as they begin to leave the baptistry, there's this loud, swishing sound. And I'm not sure if you can hear it uh, where you are, but I sure can. And in a couple of weeks, we'll baptize one of our own, and I encourage you to listen for this sound closely. And by far, it's the greatest sound, is the loud sound of the swish of the water. The water flowing off the drench, heavy, wet robe of the individual as they slosh their way and navigate the tile steps out of the water into the future. As the water hits the tile and echoes in the baptistry. For me, that is the sound that brings me hope. It's the sound of a new beginning. It's a new walk with Jesus Christ. It's a new way of life. And it reminds me of the time I made that walk out of the water. Cold and drenched and, and the, the, the road weighting me down. And I knew somehow my life would be different, but I had no idea what it meant or why or anything else. I sadly say I just did it because I was at that age and uh, that was when all my friends were getting baptized took later to I realize what it meant. But I remember that sound. And that's the sound of a moment when we're all adopted into God's family. And today we're going to revisit the baptism of Jesus. And it's important to recall again that the Gospels don't give us many details. And we, we talked about this just really a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at the, the, the Gospel of John. And maybe they don't give us details because if we get too bogged down in the details, we miss the true essence of the story. So if you will, turn with me to the third chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, uh, beginning with the 13th verse. It 
And then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But then John tried to deter, deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do, and do you come to me? So Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And as soon as John was, Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that very moment, heaven was opened up and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and, light, and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. But before we move on, we cannot miss the fact that immediately after this took place, immediately after John, uh, Jesus' baptism by John, Jesus is led out into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. And it's a fascinating that I shared with the children. It's a fascinating that the original Greek word used for baptism is, is, is literally translated as wash. It reminds us that we wash every day, but when God is present, something ordinary takes place on a whole different different level and a whole different meaning. Those of us who have graced the waters of baptism with God present, we have been washed, we have been cleaned, we have been removed of all the past dirt, and we have a new clean beginning. God's faithful and generous people, if you think about it, God's faithful and generous people constantly walk wet in this world. They walk wet, remembering their baptism and sharing the good news with everyone they encounter on their way. And sometimes they use words if necessary. We can all admit that time is precious. We can all admit that time is elusive. We can all admit that time is fleeting in front of us. And God knows that and Jesus knows that. So how do we walk wet and share the good news of Jesus Christ? The first step is to listen. It's to listen. John had to listen to Jesus. But more importantly, everyone had to listen to God. And I know listening is, is something that sounds so, so easy and simple, but it really is hard to do. To just listen. Jesus and those around listen to God's voice who said, This is my son who I love and who I am well pleased. And we must begin by, by just listening. You see, God is speaking all the time. But our problem is we live in the noisiest, loudest, most distracting time in all history where it is harder and harder to hear God's voice. This week, I was sitting in a, a doctor's office Friday when the Orlando shooting, airport shooting thing kind of happened. Immediately, it caught my attention. I usually try not to pay attention to the news, but I was trapped in a waiting room, doctor's waiting room. And as I, I, I watched one of the news coverage, it was strange to me, and I wonder if anybody else noticed it, they had an eyewitness on the phone that was still going through it, calling into the news people and telling them what was going on and what happened. He was standing right next to a gentleman that got shot. They break away, and a second later, one of the Florida senators get on there and starts to tell what happened. And both stories could not have been farther, I mean, any different, I mean, if they tried. So, so you had one eyewitness, but you had one senator saying, well, the authority said, blah, blah, blah. So, we live in a world where we don't know who to believe. We don't know how to listen. And I was like, I'm here both sides. I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm confused even, even more. And we, and we do about, we do that all, all the time. It's harder to hear God's voice when, when we're distracted by so many. And as we walking people, we must listen. And not listen to respond. And not listen for rebuttal. Not listen to reprimand. But listen to encourage. Encourage one another. Hear the voice of God. Can you imagine for a moment what our faith family or our, our own personal family or our relationships, our interactions with strangers would look, would look like if we just listened to encourage the other person? Think about it. The first thing is to listen. The second is we need to remember our own baptism. We need to begin to share it with others. 
The human brain is incredible. When we remember an event, it is stored in an area of cortex of our, of our brain. When we remember that event again, we're not remembering the actual event. What we're doing is we're remembering the memory of the actual event. Are you following me? I, I, I struggle through biology with this. Um, and when we remember again, we're not remembering the actual event, we're remembering the memory of the actual event. But our, our latest memory of such event. So if we don't recall up that memory often, it begins to fade away. Until one day, it is completely lost. So we need to keep remembering our baptism. And, we need, and when we remember it, we need to articulate it or tell someone else. And when we do, it begins to ingrain it forever in the cortex of our minds. Literally and physically, it does. Even if, even if we don't recall it, then we're going to lose it. We're going to lose it. So walking wet, we must constantly recall our baptism and move forward with Jesus into the wilderness of our own faith journey. Baptisms are about being adopted. Adopted in, in God's family. Signed, sealed, and delivered, and then sent out. And it's not the baptism where we all have to have it all figured out. It's in the sending out. It's in the sending out to tell our stories where we begin to learn. It's in the sending out, walking wet, and telling others that our baptism, baptism is where we begin to grow and begin to learn and begin to mature. And some of us sort of maybe, which is easy to do, and I'll raise my hand, for some of us, it's hard to articulate our own story. For some of us, it's hard to articulate our own baptism. But see, everyone has a faith story. I have a long time since high school friend, and he for the first time, got nominated uh, the president, or excuse me, the chairman of his local disciple congregation church, search committee, who's looking for a pastor. And me and him have been, been in constant contact, and I've, I've been kind of trying to coach him through uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, it's his first time, and he reached out to me, so I've been kind of trying to give him some advice and coach him through it, being, be helpful if, if I can, if possible. And he called me this week immediately after interviewing a possible candidate. And he was somewhat confused and, and kind of frustrated. I said, Brian, what's the matter? And he said, well, we asked the candidate, what is God calling you here to, name the church, I'm not going to name it, but name the church, to do? <coughs> Simple question. What do you feel God is calling you to our faith community? What, what do you think God is calling you to, to our, our, our congregation to do? What do you think? And the gentleman proudly and boldly and loudly said, without a shadow of a doubt, God is calling me here to your congregation to do social justice. After several attempts, my friend tried to help him clarify or maybe change his answer. And when he didn't, my friend ended by saying, thank you for your time and applying. And he turned over his papers and just moved them to the side. The committee got upset with him, which was, it demanded an explanation, which was rightfully so. And he responded, not once, not once in the 45 minutes we talked to him, not once, this is an ordained minister, not once did he mention bringing people to Jesus Christ. Not once. He says social justice is great. But he could be a social worker, he could be a lawyer, he could be a teacher, he could be an advocate, he could be a community organizer, you name it. But he couldn't articulate his own faith story. And he's applying for a job 
where that's pretty important. And this is an ordained minister and the Christian church disciples of Christ. We need to realize every single one of us has a faith story. It may not have an ending yet, but it has a faith. We all have a faith story. It's going to have ups, it's going to have downs, it's going to go sideways sometimes. But we cannot forget that. We must remember everyone we encounter in this short life has their own faith journey, just as we are. No one's better. We're just all different. But the joy, the joy of being adopted into God's family is sharing our story with others. And some of us forget that we were once dirty. So we must rekindle that joy and the greatest sound we must, when Jesus Christ came to you. We must shake off the living water and walk wet into our future. We must drink the cup of salvation. We must eat the bread of life and be sent out and tell. Tell our story to anyone and everyone who will listen because every second counts. Every second counts. So let us all walk wet to 2017 and share our stories to those that desperately desperately need to hear will you pray with me gracious and wonderful God I think as we all come here in our faith journey as we all come here with our struggles we all come here with our setbacks we all come here seeing the good things that, that you have done and the way you've blessed us. We all would have to admit, dear God, that sometimes we feel we're walking wet. But we feel we're not worthy to articulate our faith story. Sometimes we don't have the tools or the skills and that's okay. But we pray, dear God, that you allow us as we move into a new year to be more open. To share with other people what it, what it means to, to be loved by you. The joy we feel by being adopted into your family. <clears throat> what it feels to be your people who walk wet in this world. We need more people to walk wet. We pray, dear God, especially today for those of us who have forgotten that we weren't we were once dirty we were forgotten what life was like before we asked you into our hearts and our minds and souls we forgotten what life was what like before we walked into those waters of baptism to be washed help us dear God as we move forward to share our faith story and even though we may stumble over over the words Give us the actions. Give us the gestures. Give us the compassion that others can see it and read it and know that we are one of those wet, walking people who never ever forget the sound of our baptism. We ask these things in Christ's name we pray. Amen.